Hello and welcome, esteemed gamers, friends, listeners. It is Leighton here from Leighton Night with Brian Wecht, and I just wanted to tell you that if you're looking to get even more podcast goodness to put in your face, then we've got just the thing for you, which is the official Leighton Night Patreon. We have several tiers where you can get access to recommendation lists for every episode, listen to Patreon-exclusive minisodes, get into the super awesome fan Discord, and watch videos like Brian's songwriting process for jingles on the show, or me taking apart and cleaning my mechanical keyboards. It's really fun and cool, and we super appreciate your support. It's neat. We would love to see you there. Without any further ado, here's the episode. Enjoy. Love you. Bye. Well, here we are. It's the end of another stunning year of podcasting. Yeah, here we are. I think we're both in extremely chipper moods. Hell yeah. We're living in Biden's America. <laughs> First of all, this is going to be a two-parter. We're going to do some this week and some next week. And why is that? It's because it's hard to book guests in December. And <laughs> we decided to stretch this out to two episodes rather than do like a rerun or some minis or whatever next week, because we also have enough stuff to make it through two episodes. So yeah, it's a year of content. Why the hell not? What's your feeling on the word content? Do you hate it as much as some people do? It was like gamer. I feel like we had to reclaim gamer, Mm -hmm. but now I'm back on the side of hating gamer again. And content just feels like as much as I hate the word is a very useful word. Mm -hmm. I actually picked up amusing ourselves to death this morning Ah. after putting it down for a while. You've started it. Yeah, I got like 20% of the way in like months ago. And now I'm just at that sort of like leap from telegraph to television. Stunningly prescient, that book. It's so upsetting to read. Yeah. Great. How much of this episode is going to be us talking? I don't know. We have not discussed or planned this. So (laughs) let's fucking. (laughs) You're too successful podcast. Hey, everybody, it's a Sunday. Yeah, if we put a lot of planning into this, it would defeat the point of everything else we've done. Yeah, we don't want to set any precedents for professionalism or preparation. This is this is what you're getting, folks. Yeah, and you know, if you don't like it, well, it's not our fault. <laughs> we didn't try. <laughs> but yes, it is Sunday, and we have a number of tasty little clips here. Oh, I was going to say this. What I do with content is... Just to be annoying, I refer to myself as a content creator. Are you a content creator? I mean, no. (laughs) But. Fuck yeah, let's listen to this content. What are we talking about first? No, we'll get to that in a minute. So we're in year two of this. We're almost at episode 100. What are you thinking? You know, general thoughts, ideas, trends, memes, songs. Content. Yeah. Let me ask this question. How would you say year two of Late Night is different from year one? Oh. By the way, I don't have a good answer to this. Well, great. Thank you for asking. I think that year two of Late Night is different from year one of Late Night in that I've been living the same day every day for the past two years. Uh-huh. <laughs> and year two is simply, I think both of us have gotten more comfortable in the flow of the show, I think. Mm-hmm. I enjoy the podcast when I have to listen to it every week. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. I think, not to put a finer point on it, but I think we're doing a great job. And I enjoy the time we spend together and the thing we make. So what's the difference? Definitely some formatting changes have happened. Basically, it happened in the beginning of year one or the middle of year one. We aren't really answering questions that much anymore, but that fell by the wayside. Or giving advice, probably for the best. Probably for the best. One of these clips actually will have answering a question, but generally speaking, we moved away from that. And I think that is great. Mm -hmm. I have to say probably halfway through the first year, we found a guiding ethos that I don't think that we had really, at least I hadn't put much thought into, which was like, it turned into a conversation with no preparation, which Mm -hmm. I think is great. And some people would call bad technique. I call it an aesthetic. (laughs) Yeah, I completely agree. And realizing that all the things I like have a similar attitude 
towards the format and dare I say disdain for podcasting as a medium. I don't say that like I hate podcasts. Just I think a podcast is a pretty objectively silly thing to do. And I think rather than shy away from that, we have leaned into that. Yeah. As Mark Marin has said, who would have thought that everybody wanted to be a bad morning DJ 10 years ago? <laughs> I think is uh, pretty accurate. For me, I'm normally all about preparation. I like going into a situation not really knowing what to expect in this context, mm. is we show up and the conversation is what it is. And usually it's pretty light. Sometimes it gets serious. It's rarely unpleasantly contentious. I like it. That's a positive for me. And yeah. when we were talking about this with the What's That From guys with Jeff and Nate, also bears a lot of similarities to what they do, which is mm -hmm. why I think we get along so well with them, which is we just show up and talk. And that conversation is going to be interesting, at least to us, while we're having it. Yeah. What's the mini from last week? What was the name of the essay? Oh, Consider the Dick Shroom. <laughs> is what I titled the mini from last week. That's not what I was asking, but uh, oh. what was the <laughs> what was the essay oh, that the, the shitty Babbitt. composer wrote? Uh, he's not a shitty composer. He is an academic composer. His name is Milton Babbitt, and the essay was called Who Cares If You Listen? <laughs> That. Did you know that the title of that mini was Consider the Dick Shroom? No. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like to hang out and have fun, as is well documented here. And I thought that would be mm -hmm. a, you know, little Easter egg for all of you Wallace heads out there. <laughs> I don't know why I have the giggles today. I feel like I'm compensating for the general sense of, hey, everyone, it's a Sunday and it's the middle of the day. Yeah. Has doing this show intensified? your fear of repeating yourself? That's a really good question. Not really is the short answer. I, in general, have a, a fear of repeating myself. So I will often include caveats like, I think I was just saying this, or as I said recently, I kind of do that anyway. So, mm -hmm. but at some point, like, I have just learned to not remember everything I say, especially since this is the most that a recorded version of my own voice has been out there. So I'm just kind of fine with it now. If I repeat myself, that's great. And also I have to assume that, and I don't know if this is true, but it is what I'm assuming, that most people listening to the show are not listening to every single episode of it. Like they're coming and people will start halfway through or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, or just with some episode. And it doesn't really matter if we repeat ourselves. And also probably if we're repeating ourselves, it's interesting, or at least interesting enough that we came back to it. So no, I, I don't really worry about it. Do you? That's a great and much healthier perspective than I've had, which I don't feel a need to elucidate in the face of that better answer. <laughs> okay. So your answer, as I understand it, is yes. Yeah, mine is I'm extremely self-conscious about repeating myself and also just feeling like this is partially due to the world events of the past two years, but I don't go anywhere, do anything, or have new experiences or talk to people. So it's a lot of running on the treadmill of my own brain and mouth, mm -hmm. which is why I am extremely grateful for guests who are considerably more interesting and have interesting things to say. And you, of course. Well, thank you. Thank you for throwing me in there at the last minute. I think, first of all, you do yourself a great disservice because you have a million interesting things to say. Oh, of course. Of course. Yes. But yeah, the guest is a good point because we have been able to get an interesting assortment of guests from all over the world at this point. So mm -hmm. when I think about the future of this show, I think largely not about major formatting changes, which may happen, although I can't imagine at the moment what they would be, but more just like, hey, who else can we get to be on this thing? You know? Mm -hmm. So that's something from our listeners we always would love to hear. Although, as we've said in the past, please try to make the suggestions like doable. So bear in mind who we are <laughs> to we have access to. But yeah, there's lots of cool people I'd love to talk to. Who's your dream guest? Like not worrying about whether you could get him or not. Tim Heidecker is probably a big one for mm -hmm. me. Do you think he would fit well with the vibe of this show? Okay. So this is what's influencing me dragging out a silence when you ask who's the top thing. I'm trying to figure out who would actually be a good fit for the show and who would I not be too afraid of to talk to? <laughs> right. Well, that's the other side of it. Which obliterates a lot off the table. 
Yeah, although I bet, you know, no matter who it was, once we got talking, they'd be pretty chill and it would be fine. But yes, there's definitely some nerves. I'm trying to think. He's kind of like a smaller creator, but uh, like Joe Rogan? I've never heard of him. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a really cool vibe. He sounds smart from what Mm -hmm. you're telling me. Just I hear the name and I think that guy knows a lot. Intelligence. Hey, he's just asking questions. There's a term that the Skeptics Guide folks have, which I like, which is they take the acronym for just asking questions, J-A-Q, and anytime someone goes, I'm just asking questions, they call that jacking off, (laughs) which I think is great. I enjoy that. All right. Why don't we listen to some clips? Yeah. Which one feels good to start with? What the hell is marriage counseling? Okay. That's a good one. (laughs) Yeah, okay. So this first clip, this was the episode we recorded during our live stream, which was our 300 patron goal. And Rachel and I had prearranged a bit where she would interrupt (laughs) as if I was missing a marriage counseling session. And this resulted in one of my favorite possible outcomes, which is taking a beloved friend and putting them in a position of extreme emotional distress And that's all I'm going to say to set this up. This is episode 50. We called this clip Marriage Counseling, and it comes in part one and part two, which is an epilogue after the episode. Oh, I see. Okay. This is number one, Marriage Counseling one. Yeah. Ready? Three, two, one, play. (laughs) Can I try explaining my understanding of the pentatonic scale to you? I found a worse way to explain this than using the chord organ on my desk. The chord organ is uh, that famous instrument that like Daniel Johnston played. Uh Layton, keep this in the pocket, but we got to tell the Daniel Johnston story later. I think I've told that story on this show. Daniel Johnston story, we we watched the guy cry. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you for pulling this out. (laughs) I found the one thing worse than the chord organ. It's a melodica. Yeah. Oh God, guys, everybody, Vernon is reverse vaping right now. (laughs) He's tone vaping. (laughs) Melodica is the tone vape. That's right. (laughs) The jewel organ. (laughs) I'm very proud of myself for that. In terms of my understanding of music. Sorry, hold on. What? What? It's our counseling session. Marriage counseling is starting. No, no, I'm I'm busy. I can't make it. Just wrap it up. I can't make it. I'll I'll, I'll call you. Wrap it up. No, I'm busy. It's starting. I can't do marriage counseling right now. I'm sorry. (laughs) Time good. No, this is what I have to deal with every time we get on a call to fucking write or watch a film. It's always, I leave to go piss, and then I come back and he's playing the Decemberists on the goddamn ukulele. So upsetting, yeah. Okay, do whatever the fuck it is you're going to do with that thing so we can put it away. Yeah, okay, for the longest time, I didn't have a really understanding of the concept of a major scale or... Dr. Fisher says that this is... Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. You have to commit. You have to commit. So you have I can't, to I, I'm, 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 I'm working. I, I don't get paid for this. You know that, right? Sorry, guys. <laughs> I never really understood the major scale or like why that shit sounded good. I just assumed it sounded good. And what I didn't realize is that I thought scales were just like. Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Vernon. You what? are 53 years old. It is time for you to grow up and come out here and save our marriage. Anyway, do you want to? Uh... Do you want to deal with that? No, no, no. She'll get over it. This happens a lot. Brian, why is your wife texting me? I can't answer that. She says to come over. Don't come over. No, no, no. Do not do not enable her. I thought I was supposed to be a part of this family therapy session. Let's get back to the music. We'll talk about this later. All right. So that's clip one. Now let's move on to clip two. Great. Three, two, one, play. Hey, everybody. It's Brian. Uh... After we finished recording this episode, Layden and Vernon and I hopped on a little Discord call where we learned that Vernon did not think that Rachel's interruptions about marriage counseling were a bit. And this makes me really, really, really happy just because I think that's very, very funny. So as soon as we realized what was going on, Layden started recording our Discord call. So I present to you now the audio from that call. One of mine and Layton's favorite things to watch is Custom Girl 420's <laughs> wife coming in and starting shit with him while he was on... Uh... He was on a live stream and his wife comes in and screams at him in so many... 
like the whole time I felt on my back foot because like I was like, nice. Oh, weird. Do I talk about this? No, we talked about doing that. I asked her if she wanted to interrupt with a bit. And she came up with that. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> you guys are sick. You knew that was a bit, right? I immediately knew it was a bit, yeah. I was trying my fucking hardest to talk about the major pentatonic scale, which I know very little about. Uh, <laughs> no, you, so you were just nervously playing the fucking melodic, <laughs> just that like, show so us go. Because like, I was like, all right, I sort of have this bit half formed. If I concentrate, I can sort of lay the tracks of the bit in front of me. Well, the other thing is she couldn't hear you, and she timed it so that every time you started to talk, it was a complete coincidence, and it worked out so great. I love it so much. Right, man. Brian, will you call Rachel in? <laughs> Every scam needs a Patsy, Layton, and you played the Patsy perfectly. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Vernon Darling. has something he wants to tell you. <laughs> I, I thought it was real <laughs> the entire time. I spent the rest of the record like, God, like, I can't wait to get off of this call so I can smoke weed and process that. Like, oh, honey, I'm so just, sorry. No, don't, don't be. This this is the equivalent of, like, getting gold in the Olympics, right? Like, you, you, yeah, you knocked did it. You that sold bit it. out of the park, Rachel. Jesus I'm Christ. So sorry. Rachel, the highest fucking honors i like i can i cannot express to you how oh. deeply impressed i am with your comedic timing and ability oh thank you and that's that a detail that i really love that i forgot about is that rachel says you are 53 years old <laughs> i know yeah it's so funny but vernon wasn't the only one who thought it was real yes god bless anybody who watched that stream i could totally see Buying it as, as a very, like, conflict-attuned person, I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, Rachel's a very good actor. She is. And she had an amazing scene partner, of course, as well. Mm -hmm. You know, what can I say? You draw from your life to bring that to the stage, and I think we did that successfully. How's Dr. Fisher doing? I don't know. I, I don't talk to him anymore. Oh, yikes. That explains a lot. End of improv. Great. <laughs> See, and that's how you keep it going. That's yeah. called, yes, and I'm done. <laughs> yes, and I'm done. That's whatever the final episode of Late Night is. That's <laughs> yeah. the title. Yes, and I'm done. Listening to it in retrospect, also, I can really hear Vernon getting more nervous, which is so <laughs> funny. I love that he pulled out. I'm roasting him for it in the clip, but the melodica is objectively the funniest instrument he could have pulled out to be the soundtrack to marital discord. Totally. And the fact that you called him out, you mentioned the Decemberists specifically, mm -hmm. is a very, very nice detail. But it's true. It's completely true. The Mariner's Revenge song, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's several fun late night things going on there. <laughs> number one being bothering Vernon. Yes. Okay, so that's clip number one. Let's listen to something else. Next, I want you to pull up a clip from episode 71 entitled Son from Family Guy. <laughs> one of my all-time favorite moments from the show with guest Anthony Carboni. Nobody nobody could remember the name of the son from Family Guy. In a testament to the amazing writing of Seth MacFarlane and the Family Guy staff, we could not remember the name of this character that has been on the air for 20-something years and is something that is unthinkable to me on almost any other show. This character was just a complete blank to everybody involved. Excellent. Am I ruining it <laughs> by saying what happens before it happens? I feel like maybe a little bit less of saying what happens before it ha I actually like the idea of just ambushing people with clips. Yeah. We can say a little bit about who the guest is. And then reacting after. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to give a little notes app apology before we move on to account for your wrongs? Yeah, yeah. If I ruin this episode <laughs> for anybody listening to it, it wasn't my fault. Because Leighton texted me and told me <laughs> to do it. But I do feel like you can't really say anything anymore. <laughs> and comedy is under assault from a variety of standpoints. Because you used to be able to express a viewpoint and not worry about people coming after you. So I, I think what's really at stake here is my individual liberties and my First Amendment rights. So I'm just trying to, you know, stand up for this great country of ours and the principles of the Founding Fathers. 
I already forgot what it was that you're apologizing for, but I know that you just got ratioed hard. Yeah, that's what I do. Stay safe and ratio hard. Okay, clip from 71. Here we go. Playing now. Three, two, one, play. My my favorite version of that is there's that comic that's Bart Simpson and for son from Family Guy. The fuck is his oh uh, uh, son from fa- hold Seth on Seth Green Peter and not Stewie Griffin and Bro- why oh wow Davy <laughs> Ma- Davy Boy hold on. Ma- Davey Boy Griffin Meg Meg Peter Peter Stewie Stewie Brian, Brian Dog Lois Lois and Seth Green <laughs> is it Seth no, but Seth Green does the voice. It is Marky Boy. This is <laughs> astonishing <laughs> that we can't remember. Stevie, Stevie Ray Griffin. We can't, Lil, no one looked this up. Lil Lord Fauntleroy Griffin. <laughs> D- Dave, I'm going to just throw out names. Joe. Old Slim. Mark. Joey Joe what, Joe name more? Shabadoo. <laughs> Le- There's Quagmire. Leon. Yeah, Quagmire. Cleveland. Cleveland. And who's Patrick Warburton is Joe? Is Joe the name of that character? Uh, and then also the son whose name is <laughs> Mario? I, I cannot believe this. Is Luigi. It? Okay. <laughs> Wario Griffin. It's got to be like a real Anglo sounding. Waluigi Griffin. What about, aren't they vaguely Irish? Sure. <laughs> Aloysius T. Griffin. Let's go through different letters. A. No. It's a consonant. B. It feels like it's a consonant, Chris. right? Chris. Thank Chris. You. It's Chris. It's, it's Chris. Chris Griffin. Wow. Anyway, it's Chris Griffin and Bart Simpson, and they're in couples therapy talking about their shitty dads. Oh, I and love it's that. a great comic. It's so good. Uh, Chris still sounds wrong. Though. No, it's Chris. No, but you're right. How long did it take for us to. <laughs> That was about three to five minutes. That was 17 and a half years of my life. Also, guys, check this out. Uh, I wear a calculator watch every day, but now that it's hot out and I'm in the sun, I have like... <laughs> a calculator watch tan. <laughs> yeah. You're officially the coolest. Wow. If this was a late 80s movie, we would have to push you into a locker right now. I love that you kept the calculator watch coda in. That was a nice touch. Yeah, I tried to put some padding on these, you know, if I thought it was uh, particularly fun. And I, I like the calculator watch thing, too. Also, accidental theming off of marriage counseling. How so? The reason that we can't come up with Chris Family Guy is because of the comic about couples counseling. Yes, yes, yes. Now I understand. I was like, when did we talk about calculator watches? No, no. <laughs> We're both on top form today, baby. Anthony Carboni, always a favorite of ours, been on the show uh, a bunch and one of my favorite people just to joy to hang out with and have on the show. So yeah, what a fun episode there. We could have picked a million things from that. Actually, there's a moment from that episode. I really liked that. I was very proud of myself for where he said something like put down your phone and I holding it in my hand in front of him said, I'm not holding it. <laughs> and on the video episode, it really works well. It does not translate well to audio, but very funny at the time. Yeah, I really appreciate that one of the cornerstones of your sense of humor is simply gaslighting. Oh, yeah. Wait, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. Um, Missed opportunity. I should have picked up on that. You were sooner. close. All right. We're going to do less lead up to these as per your request. We can do less lead up, but we can also say random shit. Yeah. Moving on. Okay. Next. This is from episode 49 with guest Allie, and uh, I tell a story about a previous relationship. What are y'all's favorite breakup albums? Man, I've been through a breakup. I've been married for almost 14 years, so it's been a while. I mean, in the terms of not a thing that you would listen to during a breakup, but albums that are a breakup album, such as fucking Fleetwood Mac. Oh. The worst one that came to mind for me is Hospice by the Antlers. (laughs) That's not a breakup album. That's a bit worse than a breakup. That's a death album. <laughs> Honestly, for me, Sea Change by Beck is way, way up there. Uh, I really do love that album. It's not a breakup album, but I think about it because I was going through a breakup when I heard it. It was also one of my favorite albums of all time. It's uh, The Unauthorized Biography of Reinhold Messner by Ben Folds Five. Oh. It's a really, really great album. I have not heard it. I think it was kind of a flop for him. It has one song, Army, that got a bunch of radio play, but it's a really beautiful album. (laughs) All right, here's my story about that album. 
I was listening to that when I was moving. So this would have been 2004. I was just graduating from grad school and planning to go on to a postdoc in Boston. And I was dating this girl out there. And I could tell that it wasn't really going to last very long. Actually, my highlight of that relationship, about a month in, it was kind of a thing where she was pretty clingy. And I was like, you know, well, actually, I'm just about to defend my thesis and I kind of need some alone time to like think about that and work on that. And she said, well, look, Brian, I totally get that. I know you're a scientist and you're in grad school. You need your alone time. What I'm just asking you, though, is why can't your alone time include me? Oh, no. That's like something, if my dog could speak, I think those would be the only words that she would say. If Audrey could speak. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that quote has stuck with me for years. Why can't your alone time include me? So being a, a young, well, however old I was, 29 at the time, I decided to drop a subtle hint about the future, suspected future of our relationship. And I played a song off that Ben Folds album called Don't Change Your Plans for Me. Oh, no. Subtle. Oh, no. I played it for her, and I was like, what do you think? And it made her sad. And then I felt very bad. And we did break up not long after that. There's a whole fucking story here, but... The slow descent. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Okay, I will tell this story. I've never told this story publicly. (laughs) I'm so excited. Exclusive. Okay. So this is slightly after me playing this track for her. I think it was February, something like that. We'd only been dating a couple months, and I'd known for a while that her birthday was coming up. And because I was in a band, we had a gig scheduled many months in advance on her birthday. I'm going to make up a name. Give me a female name. Jane. I'll call her Jane. And I was like, all right, Jane, I know your birthday's coming up, but look, I'm in this band. We've scheduled this gig months in advance. I'm just telling you in advance that we cannot do anything on your birthday. Why don't we go out for dinner the night before? And then on your birthday, if you want to, you can come to this show. And unfortunately, that's the way it's going to be. And she was like, I totally get it. Completely fine. Great. So I take her out to a nice dinner for her birthday the previous night. I was in grad school, so I had no money whatsoever. You know, I spent what for me was a lot of money on a nice dinner. It was a great night. So she stays over at my place. Next morning, she wakes up and she wakes up mad, like mad, mad. Oh, no. And I was like, all right, Jane, what's up? And she's like, I can't believe it's my birthday. We can't hang out tonight. And blah, 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 so mad. <sighs> and I was like, look, I'm so sorry. There's nothing I can do about this. I have, you know, whatever, five other people in my band that we've booked this gig. This is just what it has to be. And I'm sorry. Yeah, you're just you're mad, mad, mad. Flash forward to the end of the day, experienced a whole day of this woman just being furious with me, like simmering, (sighs) simmering anger. And so I have to go. I load in. After we load in, she comes with me. She's just standing pouting the whole time. Very, very mad. So I take her across the street for a quick, like, Mexican dinner. There's a little burrito place. We get some burritos. She's mad the whole time. (laughs) I'm just like, Jane, what am I supposed to do here? I'm a part of this band. I can't just leave. Flash forward a little bit more. We're in the gig. She stands front and fucking center next to the stage, arms crossed, furious the entire (laughs) time, the entire time. And I remember talking to her. I'm like, can you just move? Like, can you stand (laughs) somewhere else? (laughs) We're playing a show. Killing the vibe. Just move, please. Like a gargoyle just looking over you. <laughs> She's like, I can't believe I'm not even getting free drinks on my birthday. I'm like, what? I don't get free drinks here. Do you understand my deal? We're not a popular band. <laughs> You're, we're the phase where you pay to be there. Yeah. Our deal with this bar was we got unlimited Miller lights. And that was it. <laughs> so I was like, I can pour you as many pints of fucking Miller light as you want. No. But I don't get free drinks and already spent all my money last night. So the guys, of course, in the band, I was with these guys, some of whom were academics, some of whom were not, all very, very chill dudes. It was like basically a jam band. And throughout this whole thing, they were like, what is up with that chick? Like, what is going on with Jane? And I was like, oh, she's mad, this birthday thing. And they, they had already seen some warning signs before this, which I won't get into. As is always the case with the bros. Oh, yeah, the boys, they know. 
because she'd constantly told me, she was like, why do all your friends hate me? I was like, I, I don't think they hate you. Oh. Oh, no. I think you're just maybe a little standoffish around them. Well, that caused a whole argument, which uh, I, I don't need to detail. Uh. <laughs> I love that I just know this person and have had to encounter this person repeatedly. Yeah, exactly same. You know this person 100%. So anyway, one of our covers, we did a few covers, we were mostly originals, but we did a bunch of covers too. And one of our covers was a Ben Folds song. <laughs> but, Here we go. Okay, okay. But she did not put those two together, all right? So that's not even the point of the story. That's there's actually a coincidence from the point of view of the story. Oh, no. So the name of the song was Song for the Dumped. <laughs> Excellent song. So prophetic. Do you know the song? Yeah, I love that song. It's a great song. It has a great piano solo in it. It's just awesome. So I'm like, you know, I, I'm in this band. I'm playing a bunch of instruments. I'm setting up. I'm trying to deal with this angry, angry girlfriend and the whole thing. And I hear the song being counted off, you know, one, two, three, four. And as it's being counted off, she turns tail and storms out, storms out of this bar. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and I, of course, the song's starting, so I just play it. No idea what happened. Get done with the gig. She was simmering before. Now she is full-blown rage. Rage. And, of course, I have to break down. And then we leave. She comes back to my place with me. Why? I don't know. But she came back <laughs> oh, no. with me. And she's mad the whole time. She's, like, not even talking. And we go to sleep. I wake up the next morning. She's sitting up in bed mad. And I'm <laughs> like, Jane, what is going on? Like, why did you leave this gig? You're like, why are you so mad? One of the guys in my band was named Rusty. She goes, you heard what Rusty said. And I was like, what? She's like, before that song, the, the dumped song. And I was like, what, no, what did, what did Rusty say? She's like, I know what he said. Like, I definitely heard it. I was like, just tell me what he said. She goes, when he was introducing the song, he said, this song's for everybody that needs to break up with their girlfriends, like Brian. And I was like, there is no way, no way he said that. A, because I didn't hear it. And B, because he would not do that. He just would not do that. We loaded out at like 4 a.m. or something. I wake up at, I don't know, 8 a.m. So we're up in bed. We're discussing this. And she's like, fucking call him if you're so sure. Call him right now. What? <laughs> And me being a consummate professional, I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh my God. I call Rusty and I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. Help me out here. Did you say this thing that Jane said? And he's like, no, of course not. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? And I was like, okay, thanks. Go back to sleep. Click. <clears throat> Huge fight. We break up. <sighs> like that day, that morning, we break up. Uh, that sounds like such a fucking relief. <laughs> such a relief. Wow, she really, like, lived in her own world. Yes. And I admire that, <laughs> but also it frightens me. <laughs> it was nuts. So here's the coda to this story. Oh, my God. You know, they're close friends. I keep in touch with them. A couple years later, I'm back in San Diego, just hanging out with these guys. And we're just, you know, reminiscing about the band. or Maybe we were playing another gig or whatever. I can't remember. And I was like, dude, Rusty, do you remember... That whole bullshit with Jane when she was like, do you remember when Rusty said, you know, this song's for everyone that needs to break up their girlfriends like Brian? Can you believe she thought you said that? And he was like, of course I fucking said that. Are you kidding? <laughs> he was like, you, you guys needed to break up and you weren't going to do it. So I took the initiative. So did that just skate over your head while on stage? I, like how I went for two years, like knowing, not even thinking, knowing that this girl was wrong, that my close friend Rusty would never say this, never, ever in a million years. <laughs> and then I was like, what the fuck? It's one of those like, oh my God, totally changed everything kind of things out of the blue. And I talked, I was like, you said you didn't say it. He was like, I was drunk. It was like, you called me four hours after we loaded out of a gig. What was I supposed to fucking say? I need to go back to sleep. Holy shit. 
That's such an incredible breakup story. Yeah. And also, despite Rusty's move there, probably for the best. Power play is how I would describe it. One. <laughs> 100% for the best. Like, yeah. <laughs> how long had you been seeing her? Not long. I mean, a month into dating, she was like, we should move in together. <gasps> <laughs> it was that kind of thing. No! I don't think we went out for more than four months. I would be shocked if it were that long. Shocked. Oh my God. That's incredible. Speechless. Yeah. Shout out to Ben Folds, and also for the crux of that story not being what I expected, which I was like, oh, she's going to hear a song for the dumb to not recognize a Ben Folds song and think it's about her. But no. Nope. She heard something far worse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What a great clip. What a great clip. Do you remember <laughs> anything about that story? It was too long to listen to right now. Yes, I do. This was Annoying Girlfriend, which also had a cornerstone of uh, gaslighting, right? with the guy who was in the band? Yes. I was going to say unintentional, but no, it was like super intentional. <laughs> yes. He said he didn't do something, but he actually did. Mm -hmm. I love that everyone just spent 11 minutes listening to that. And we also totally, totally also did. Yes. I wonder if the girl in question will ever hear that story. I don't know if she kept up with me online or whatever since then. Obviously, I'm more of a public figure now than I used to be. So it's not that hard to find me, but I'm curious. Isn't that a frightening prospect now where it's just like, huh, anyone from my past can simply find me easily. Oh, it's so weird, right? Yeah. You know, reading amusing ourselves to death. I'm not super hot on the whole social media thing. Yeah, it's like the big thing that Postman missed in that book, obviously, like didn't exist at the time, but it feels like the natural evolution of every problem. Yes, it really, truly does. What better way to exacerbate that problem than everything? Now, I can't remember from that episode. Do you have a bad breakup story that you feel like sharing? <laughs> I only have bad breakup stories. <laughs> and yes. due to the aforementioned anyone being able to find you online and listen to your recounting of it, I'm good. Okay, but just give me like three or four really bad ones. With names. Of course, yes. I will also link you their profile. You know what? I think it's fair to say most of mine are not, in fact, breakup things because it's like it's not actually a relationship. It's not really a breakup. Mm -hmm. But I will just simply say the phrase minions underwear. Okay, yes. Uh, and then we move on. Yes, great. All right, moving on. How about this one from episode 83? This is short enough to listen to. You went straight to the one that I was hoping you were going to say. Yeah, it's a nice short one regarding a thing we talk about a lot, internet comments. Let's just listen to it. This was the wonderful Satchel Drake. So it was the guest on this episode. And we were talking about discourse. And here we go. Three, two, one, play. Yesterday... I posted a very, very gentle thing that I sent to Leighton, just reminding people that there was an election in California. And stating how you voted in said election. It said, if you're a California voter, vote in the recall election. Parenthetical, I voted no. And the toxicity of the comments was intense in such a way where I was like, on Instagram? Not on Twitter. I posted basically the same thing on Twitter. Like literally the Instagram post was a picture of my tweet about the same thing. Twitter comments, there wasn't much there. Instagram went off. And I was very puzzled by that. Not that negativity exists on Instagram. Like, of course it does. Yeah. But just that where I thought if any community reacts to this, it's going to be Twitter people basically because of shareability. Maybe it's just that expectation of what you tweeted is a very Twitter thing to tweet. It's not a very Instagram thing to share. As evidenced by the fact that I Instagrammed a picture of a tweet. So, no. <laughs> like, I mean, taking it back is the wrong word. I was just like, oh, wow, I guess this is where this argument's going down. There's something so particularly terrible about when people get into arguments with each other under your post, because A, it's stressful for you, because then it's usually about you or what you have said. But then there's the additional element of like, man, people are like having shitty moments in their day because they're arguing with each other on the comments of this thing that I have to keep getting notifications every time they throw a dunk on. Like, yeah. no, thank you. And the other thing is with Instagram arguments, the threading sucks yeah. on it. 
So you can never tell who mm. is really responding to what. Yeah. Right. And then you, you keep doing the read more, read more, read more. And it's just like paragraphs of text to get to the insight. It like, ah, ah. Yeah. I didn't send this to you, Layton. I did take a screenshot of what my favorite comment was, which I'll read to you. This is where everyone slowly learns that a PhD is just a piece of paper and not a sign of overall intelligence. <laughs> God. Yeah, wait, wait, it gets better. This, you oh you pay the schools God. enough money and adopt their ritualistic ideals, and you will be given the paper of solidarity. <laughs> that feels like a fucking copy bust. Wow. <laughs> It's personal enough that I don't think it's a bot, but it's also stupid enough <laughs> that maybe it is. I can't with these discourse queens. Like. I know. <laughs> <laughs> discourse queens. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's a, that's a great term for who this person is. Oh, the paper of solidarity. <laughs> yeah. Internet discourse. Something I notice about when I listen to this show is, you know, a thing that I do every week that... I, without fail, will do the exact same laugh to something that I find funny that someone else says as I do in the episode in real life. So it becomes surround sound <laughs> exact laugh. Uh -huh. We both have like a variety of different laughs and chortles. Mm -hmm. and it'll be the same exact one every time. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that. I was just thinking when I was listening to these clips that getting to know your laughs <laughs> is really fun. So let's see if I can characterize them. There's that one that you just did, which is like kind of a breathier ha ha like sort of thing. Okay. And that's when you're amused, but it's not like next level. Mm -hmm. Then there's a, a more verbalized higher pitch one, which is when you think something is very funny, but it's not like mm -hmm. top, top, top of the chain. Mm hmm. And then you have one that is like a bark where you seem to explode <laughs> briefly. Yeah, that's what I call hitting the tilt on the Leighton pinball machine. Yeah, that's the best one, obviously, because that's when like you really knocked something out of the park. If I said something really funny and I get that, I'm like, all right, I got there. I got to level three. <laughs> well, for you, I feel like that's if you snort. Yes, that's absolutely true. Can you characterize mine in kind of the same way or what? Yours are all around like the same little tenor there, but you will get like a snort or it will be like a little faster. Yeah. If it's particularly good. Well, when I find something truly, truly funny, I cannot speak. For me, that's the ultimate. That's probably pretty common. I, I bet you have that too. When your eyes fill with tears, such as during oh, man. our first or second live show when Jory got up and told his story. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I get... One or two of those a year, mm -hmm. maybe, if I'm lucky. And that was absolutely one of them. Yep. Oh. I can think back to two others with that. One was the first time I ever saw the Moon and Nights episode of Aqua Teen Hunger Force hmm. on the ground, virtually gasping. <laughs> and the other <laughs> was when I was watching a video by the German artist Carpaduke called Vomit of Evil. <laughs> which I may or may not have shown to you, and it does not exist in the form I saw currently on YouTube. Whoa. Let's see if I can find this. Vomit of Evil, Carpaduke. Yeah, this does not exist anymore. Wow. Oh, my God. Anyway, the history of Carpaduke was when Danny and I were signing CDs at CD Baby, I don't know, a year ago. Because CD Baby, the deal is, or was, I don't know if it's still the case, that for every artist who sells a CD, they have to have at least one in their warehouse. They have a ton of CDs from artists where they just have one CD. And anyone can list an album there, so there's no audition. You just put it up. Oh. And so we were like, tell us about, you know, some weird shit you've gotten. And they were like, well, here's a pile that just recently came in. And I pulled out a CD from this artist, Carpet Duke, who I believe is German, and it's spelled Carp E Duke, sees the Duke. And no joke, this album had a preamble or somewhere on the cover, which basically said, if this is too advanced or too deep for you, I apologize. Not everybody is ready for this music, but I feel like it is my duty to bring it into the world. And we then started watching 
his videos on YouTube. I'm so bummed these don't exist anymore. It was a bunch of people in like rubbery monster masks running around either in a graveyard or along the coasts of Colombia. <laughs> and he had one song called Melissa, which had like a three minute long introduction, it took forever, and then went into like hardcore, rah, 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 you know, like rah, rah, mm-hmm. kind of metal stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's one scene in the video where, who appears to be a very nice Colombian woman, is getting completely freaked on by a dude in like a green monster mask. And this lady is, you know, kind of butt dancing. And this monster mask guy is behind her, like thrusting towards. It was maybe one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And for years, Carpa Duke has been my go-to, like, this is my favorite video of all time. And I don't know if it exists anywhere anymore. I actually love this for you because now, how often is it that like you love a thing, you cannot find it online? Almost never. Almost never. Let's get more of those. I want more of those. Do you have any of those that occur to you? No. I think there are ones that I thought were lost and then I found. And then it, like, it's exciting that you find them, but then it takes a little bit of the magic away. Yeah. No, for sure. And somebody will probably upload it somewhere eventually if it's popular enough. The thing about Carpaduke is this music was never popular, which is why it was so great. And I wouldn't be surprised if these videos I just never see again, ever. It looks like maybe the songs are out there. Let me look on Spotify. But I wouldn't be surprised if I never see these videos again. They only live in my memory. Is Carpaduke on Spotify? I don't think so. Wow. What's another clip? Oh, yeah, fine. I guess we'll get back to this. You know, the best of episode that we're doing and all? Yeah, sorry, I was talking about Carpaduke. How about episode 79? Yes, that's a very good one. Guest on this episode, my own sister, Stephanie Wecht, a wonderful and accomplished person whose birthday happens to be today, by the way, (gasps) that we're recording. Happy birthday. Yep. I talked to her this morning. And yeah, it was fun to have her on. And let's play the clip. Three, two, one, play. Stephanie, what are the truly embarrassing or awful stories you can tell about me as a child? Do you remember anything? (laughs) Well, you know my favorite story. Is this the God's phone number story? Yeah, (laughs) it is. Well, then please tell it. So we were on, I think it was one of the road trips that we took. Our parents always, for a long time, had a van. And it was one of those like old, probably like 70s, 80s vans. There was like a bed in the back. You didn't have to be seat belted in. The back seat was a bench seat that would fold down into a bed. Yep. Wow. And there was like, even like a, a very early on, like, TV that was up there. Yeah, we had one van and then the upgraded van, which was like, I remember it being blue and gray, right? Yeah. So right behind the driver's and passenger seat in the middle, up, there was a tiny little TV, which was maybe like a four inch screen or something. Yeah, you couldn't see anything. Like a little, little TV. You couldn't see anything. I love that. Yeah. And we had a VHS player. So on these long road trips, we could watch... VHS tapes on this teeny tiny little TV. Mm -hmm. Which is not relevant to the story, but just to set the scene, I guess. Yeah. So we were literally hurtling down, you know, the highways and byways of this country at whatever, 60, 70 miles an hour, not seat belted, laying down on this bed in the back. Yeah. (laughs) Watching VHS tapes. Wow. Yeah. I remember at some point you got very mad at a Rubik's Cube. (laughs) Well, and I can't remember exactly what I was mad about, but... At one point, I said something about the fact that I was going to call God and that I had his phone number. (laughs) And your response was, you don't have God's phone number? And I said, yes, I do. And you said, well, then tell it to me. And I realized at that moment, I had like the perfect way where Brian couldn't disprove me. And I said, I'm sorry, God said I can't give it to you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and this drove him insane. I was very upset. Because he had no way to prove that I did not have God's phone number because <laughs> God wouldn't let me give it to him. I had trapped him in like the most perfect way possible. And he was furious. And I think this went on forever with him just saying, tell me what it is. And me saying, I'm sorry, God says you can't have it. <laughs> 
This is exactly how religion works. <laughs> Truly, yeah. How old were both of you during this story? If I had to guess, I'd say I was probably seven or eight and you were five or six, something like that. Yeah, maybe you were 10. I don't know. Somewhere <laughs> in that like five to 10 range. I do love a story of a younger sibling really sticking it to an older sibling. Like, I've got God's phone number. Uh, fuck you. Yeah, because Brian always knew so much more than I did. I was two and a half years older. And it was the one thing that I could hold over his head. Incredible. So would you like to tell us all what God's phone number is? I'm sorry, but God says that I can't tell you. Shut up. But no, just say it. But just say it. I'm sorry. I would if I could, but my hands are really tied on this. Damn it. Far be it for me to disagree. Beautiful. All right, there we are. That bitch still hasn't told me. (laughs) (laughs) All right, what's next? All right, next clip. Let's see. What's looking fun here? Any of these jumping out at you? I imagine we're going to do a big batch of the What's Poppins. All right. So, Layton, every week on the show, we have a pop culture segment where you get to recommend a book, a movie, a song, a video game, something that is interesting to you, something that you've experienced or consumed recently. And the name of that segment is What's Poppin'. So the thing that's interesting about that segment is it has a theme song, which I like to play for our guests, but often to put them in the right frame of mind, because it's not the kind of thing you can go into just kind of cold. It wouldn't really work that well. You know, like much of modern music, it requires some context or some education to be able to properly appreciate. I always like to set it up for them. And I've heard a variety of reactions to the setups that I like to do for the benefit I should say, of the guests. Some people have told me that they're great. Some people have told me that they're amazing. Some people have told me that they're perfect. Some people have told me that literally I shouldn't change a thing about what I'm doing. Other people have said it's the highlight of the show. Still more people have called it a cultural touchstone. (laughs) The reactions really are truly all over the map, you know, on the spectrum from enthusiastic assent to overwhelming approval. Really, we touch everything. And I thought it'd be fun for this best of here to include some of these setups for the what's popping segment and not really the segment itself, but really the lead up to the segment, which again is the context providing. Because who cares about the segment itself, right? Well, I believe nothing from an actual full what's popping segment has made it onto the best of 2021 because that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is the theme song. You are taking a real aggressive approach. Like, this is a bold move to not only play several of these back-to-back, but to choose the long-form buildup. I understand from a comedic perspective why you would do this, but it really is adding a, um endurance challenge element. I don't think of what I do. It's not comedic, right? No, it's definitely not. It's a public service. Right. I'm not, I'm not doing this for my benefit. Play your public service announcement. I have other stuff to do. So first, we're going to start off with episode 65 with guest Aaron Hansen, where we had a really, really fun <laughs> intro to What's Poppin'. So, Leighton, let's play this together. This episode 65, three, two, one, go. I want to show you this video. Okay. This is Guitar Center Drum Off 2012 finalist. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Okay. I don't know how something can be simultaneously so impressive and so douchey. <laughs> you know, I do have a wife that's waiting for me at home. <laughs> it's almost done. Brian, I fucking swear to God. In if, five more minutes. If you do this. <laughs> and, and, hold on. There was no switch to like a stick cam or whatever the fuck. No, I just like that video. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, there was some good camera work there, though, right? Do your fucking segment, Brian. Okay, so our first segment is our pop culture recommendation segment. Yeah. So you get to recommend anything you've been enjoying recently, book, movie, video game, whatever it is. Sure. Uh, The segment is called What's Popping? What's Popping? And here's the theme song. Should be coming through your headphones. No, yeah, I don't... You know, yeah, let me try. <laughs> there, there is a style of comedy. Let me try it again, Brian. Let me try it again. Hold on. I think the interface might not be working. Yeah. Got it. It's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. 
That's good. That's good. You know, you know, Brian, you have a oh, very... The theme song is still going. Yeah. And it's five minutes, you said? Or did you restart it? I restarted it. Okay. <laughs> and that's the What's Poppin' theme song. Awesome. Uh, I hate you so fucking much. <laughs> There's a style of comedy that you do, I think. You know, when you're in improv, right? Yeah. You do this thing where I have no idea how to participate. <laughs> you know, in improv comedy, usually it's like, here you go. But with you, it's just kind of like, fuck, just hawk the ball right at my feet. I'm like, wow, Jesus. I don't know how to react to that. That's your style of comedy. <laughs> no, it's not. No. Aaron, you put that yes. so articulately in a way that having to deal with this shit every week. My goal is to set other people up to look great. And I think I did that today. How long is the theme song? <laughs> it's uh, when the real one is like two seconds. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? <laughs> oh, wow. That's the bit. Oh, okay. This is our first time doing it live, though. I think it worked really well. Okay, cool. <laughs> is it still going? Is that the joke? No, no, no. Now As we're moving said, on. It's just. Fuck you. You can't participate. So I'm going to, I'll start. It's really, yeah, yeah. yeah share your recommendation, uh, Brian. With, with, <laughs> all right. That was number one. Now, a close collaborator of ours, mine, Aaron's, yours, Ross, was on another episode where we did a What's Poppin' bit. And let's play that one. Yes. All right. So this is episode 80. Ross, what's poppin'? Here we go. Three, two, one, play. Should we move on to segments? Sure. It means is we're transitioning to the next part of the show, Ross. Ross, you appear agitated. Are you okay? No, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm good. Because there's nothing to worry about with these segments. Have you heard this show before, Ross? No. Good. You sure you don't need a break? Should I get one? No, 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 no. <laughs> we, we, it's better if we just move on. Is something bad happening? No, 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 nothing. Ross, nothing. No, nothing bad is happening. It's just we're moving on to segments. Let's go. So our first segment, this is our pop culture recommendation segment. It's called What's Pop? Now we've talked a lot about media and stuff we've been watching or whatever so far in the show, but you get to explicitly recommend one thing, book, album, video game, whatever, movie, doesn't matter, some pop culture thing that you like. And Leighton and I will do the same. But the whole point of this segment, other than the recommendation part, is that... Okay. So you're aware that I'm a musician, right? No. Okay. Well, I am. I'm in this band called Ninja Sex Party. And I'm in another band called Starbomb. I'll check them out someday. It's not worth it. Another band called Go Banana Go, which is my kid's band. But my point is I've been writing music for, you know, close to 30 years of my life. And when we created this podcast, so I do all the themes for it, some in collaboration with Layton, we had this segment and this was an early segment in the podcast. And we were like, you know, we wanted to be professional. We started off a little loose and, uh, sorry, I'm just going to take a drink. It's a big sip. It's a real good touring mug. That's much better. We wanted to be professional, so we decided, like many other podcasts, rather than just having a loose conversation happening, we wanted to have some you know, proper segments that could you know, differentiate the second half of the show from the first half. So I wrote this theme song for it. And the goal with the theme song, which you'll hear when I play it for you, is to really drive home the professionalism of this show. You know, I don't I try not to put too much ego into the show, even though my full name is in the title. Layden's name, of course, is there too. Layden Knight, even though her last name's not Knight. But I wanted to, I should say, make sure that people knew, you know, just get a little bit of my musical voice in the show rather than my actual voice. Right. So that's what the impetus. Usually I know most works of art you shouldn't contextualize so much, but I feel like this actually will be more impactful with this extra context in front of it. You seem to be nodding a lot, which I love. It's very encouraging, the vibes I'm getting from you. It's very supportive. I really, really, really like it. The pace of nodding is, is great. The problem whenever you play 
or show someone something that you've made is sometimes people aren't open to negative feedback. I am very open to negative feedback, but in this case, it's not even relevant because you're going to hear this thing and you're going to immediately fall in love with it. I can send you, if you want the clean audio file of it after the show, after we're done recording, I could even actually text it to you while we're recording if you love it that much, which is definitely a possibility. And it has happened in the past, probably not, but you're going to like it no matter what. So the theme song I'm talking about, I feel like you might've lost the thread uh, a little bit here. The theme song that I'm talking about in question is the theme song for the what's poppin segment. And this is the segment where we get to recommend a book, a movie, <laughs> a video game, or what? Layton is smiling. I'm sorry, I was responding to a vibe there. And I'm going to play that theme song for you uh, in just a second as soon as I take another drink. You know, I like this real good tour. Oh, you know what? The mug wasn't open. All right, here we go. Counting down to the theme song. In 20, 19, 18. Oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. 17, I'll be right back. 16, <laughs> 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three. God, I hope he doesn't come back. Yeah. Y'all can't handle this. Two, one, play. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? All right, and that's the what's poppin' theme. Mm -hmm. What did you think? What was happening? Uh, the what's poppin' theme. I'm just asking you what you thought. What was that? The what's poppin' theme. I'm just asking you what you thought. I can't hear you. It's the what's poppin' theme. I'm just asking you what you thought. Huh? Yeah, the theme to what's happening. I'm just popping you what you thought. What? <laughs> Here. We can't hear you, Brian. It's the theme song to what's poppin'. I hear it. All right, what'd you think? It was pretty good. Cool. With the, you know, distance from having recorded that episode, I forgot that Ross and I were both legitimately having problems hearing you and neither of us said anything except for that one yeah. moment where we were both fucking with you. <laughs> yeah. Wh which I didn't realize until way later in the episode because no one thought to say anything. <laughs> Here's something that I'd like to bring up about what's popping and the bit mm -hmm. with the theme song in particular because you spend so much time you know, introducing this segment. And I know you put a lot of work into making the music for this show and it's very much appreciated. Thank you. But I just have a question about like a really specific part of the theme song. Mm -hmm. You're really big on, God, how do you do this every week? This fucking sucks to do, Brian. I don't know what you're talking about. My legitimate question is, is there a Discord notification sound in What's Poppin'? Oh, not on purpose, no. Okay. I think you should add one. Because <laughs> it totally sounds like it. Huh. I don't want to get in your business, but I think it would be pretty funny if you shoved one in there every once in a while. Because I hear one every single time. Huh. Interesting. At the end. People listening tell me I'm not alone. Every time I hear it, in the last like couple of seconds, I hear a Discord notification. And I have those completely turned off. So it's not... Anyway, that's my late night conspiracy theory. Oh, interesting. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? Moving on. This next what's poppin' is my favorite what's poppin' of all time, but we're missing a big element of it with this being an audio episode. The operative part of why this is so funny to me is because of what was happening on the video. How much do I spoil? As much as you want. I'm not sure I've had a harder time keeping a straight face over the course of this show, but the progression of me visibly losing it is extremely funny, in my opinion. God damn. Like, I'm recalling the pain vividly. Oh, it's pretty great. 
Yeah. So as you listen to this one, if you're not on the Patreon already, which you should be, <laughs> but, I, but I don't blame you if you're not. Oh, I do. Blame him enough for both of us. But just imagine me just looking like I am just a woman ruined. <laughs> All right, well, this is from episode 93 with the amazing Jory Griffiths. Enjoy. (laughs) Wow, Jory. Uh, Listen, I need to go pee. Does anyone else need a bathroom or otherwise break? I probably would do that. All right. I'm going to sit and stare at my computer. That sounds great. Say stuff. Uh, Let's just keep this running. Don't turn it off. And uh, we'll come back in in a couple minutes and then we'll move on to segments, which I'm very excited about. Wow. But I'm always excited about them. So wow. don't read anything. Wait, 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 Jory, stay on. You stay on. Brian, leave. I no, can't Jory, come back. I took, I took off the headphones. I can't. <laughs> no, Jory, come back. What? Jory, come back. Brian's going to try to do his fucking what's popping bit on you, and I need you to fucking be on my side for this. Or do I, I just like, to... do I just like stone face it, or? I say that his bit makes you uncomfortable like viscerally that like you're really uncomfortable with the position that he puts or any sort of thing because if you say either the song was horrible or it was really great and he doesn't play it you've you're you've played into his game you know yeah i think last time i said it was great uh yeah just whatever you do don't do that just don't humor it just shut it down okay great and then this can this will play at the end of this podcast episode, like the phone call from the end of a Metal Gear game or like a post credits MCU <laughs> thing or something. <laughs> go, go use the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, late night listeners. So hope you enjoyed that. Hey, Brian, editing this episode. You didn't hear that. Uh, all right. Well, it's time for segments which is very exciting. Now, actually, it's time to introduce the show. So everybody... Right. This is Late Night with Brian Wacht. Over here we have Layden Gray. Hi, that was me. Um, that one was Brian Wacht. Hi. Mystery guest, who the hell are you and what are you doing here? I don't get it. What are we... Hi. I'm, <laughs> Ch- I'm, I'm Jory. <laughs> all right, great. That's all we needed. <laughs> the, the only person uh, other than Jarek who's been on the show three times... Yay! <laughs> Uh, and it's because we love you and we think you're amazing. And you are... And not because based on numerical metrics, you're potentially our most popular guest. But you know, it's, Is that true? Yeah, generally, yes. Wow. There's a, there's a big a spike for Jory episodes. These are always fun episodes. Yes. This is, we've just been hanging out to the point that I forgot that we were doing podcast. Now, um, okay, so that's the show introduction. Box checked. Boom. Sorry, for our uh, UK listeners, box ticked, boom. Uh, my boom had an E on the end of it for our UK listeners. And uh, this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something new this week, which is, since Jory, this is, you are the first non-production team member of the show to be on three times or more. Um, I think we should always make sure that no matter who we have on the show, Jory has always been on the most. What do you think about that? Can we commit to this? This is not what I was about to say, but I think we should commit to, to this. Are you? I need a verbal yes from both of you. Obviously, wholehearted yes, but we require Jory's consent for this. My ego, which is dark and withered like a a, a worm tempted onto a sidewalk during a <laughs> rainstorm with no way back beneath the ground, uh, is not comfortable <laughs> with that plan. But if it stays that way, that's fine. That's a yeah. I'm going to call that a yes. Anyway. Okay. okay. So I'm going to, I want to do something new uh, with the segments this week, which is, so Jory, as you're aware, we have uh, two segments on the show. The first is uh-huh. called What's Poppin'. Now, yes. here's something I've never asked a guest before. Do you want to hear me introduce the What's Poppin' segment? You can say yes or no. There are no correct answers. You, if you want to hear me introduce it, that's great. If you don't want to don't want to hear me introduce it, that's fine too. I leave it. The ball is in your court. As our first third time guest, what would you like, Jory? I want to make this about your needs. And I it, listen. Don't rush to an answer. You can take some time to think about it. But what I want to do here is make sure that this segment is not about me. It is about you, and it is about what what you want. So take some time, gather your thoughts, see where you are. 
emotionally right now in terms of wanting to listen to a segment introduction or not wanting to listen to a segment introduction. Now, I will tell you that if you hear the segment introduction, you will not be disappointed. I do want to just put that front and center. But I also won't be upset if you decide that you don't want to hear the segment. Okay, so rather than make, you know, I feel like sometimes, and especially in the last episode, sometimes I can go a little long uh, with the segment introduction uh, because I get so excited about all the new music I write for it uh, every week. But this is about you. So I'm going to ask you the question. I think you've had a little time to ponder it. Do you want to hear the What's Poppin' intro? And again, you can say yes, you can say no, you can say you need more time. Actually, I should have said that too. If you need some more time to, uh, to think about it, to reflect, you can talk to Layton about it if you want. Actually, that's fine too. You can have a conversation. This show is, if, uh, if it, what was, what should I say? If we are nothing else, we are a conversation. Please, I'm trying to talk to Jory. So just give me, give me a fucking second, please. We are a conversation. So if you need to have a conversation about it, uh, we can have a conversation. So, Jory, would you like to hear the What's Poppin' set, uh, introduction? I would be remiss to decline the What's Poppin' introduction. I need a yes or a... Dude, I set this whole fucking thing up. I need a yes or a no from you. Brian, this is seeming diminishingly like it is like <laughs> with regards to my comfort. Mm -hmm. Seems a little like this might be Mm -hmm. A lot of ginning up for a bit. I don't do bits. I've never done a bit. Mm -hmm. I do introductions. I host the show. As we, we have established here, I, I, have, I come here to do two things, which is hang out and have fun. I just want right. to do cool things and have a good time. So do you want now, to hear the What's Poppin' introduction? Yes. I, you yes, you said you come here to do two things. Hang That's out, right. which is inclusive, and have fun. Uh huh. Is the fun for you, Brian, or is it for everyone? Uh, if everyone's having fun, what am I trying this to say? This is so if, transparently if one... not an answer to my question. This is so transparently not an answer to my <laughs> you're question. You're wrong. You're wrong. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> if someone's not having fun, we're not having fun. So if even one person in the group isn't having fun, I don't call that having fun. Having fun is an inclusive experience. If one person feels left out or less than, that's not fun for me. I would never want that, ever. It's a pretty satisfying answer to my question. Isn't it? Yeah, you're doing pretty well. I think I'm getting on your side here. I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't you be? Now, I've been on the show. I was on the show early enough that there weren't segments yet. Mm -hmm, but I was on the right. show once before on... I wish I knew the exact date. If I could name the exact date oh, that, that I was on, it would be really funny. Time. <laughs> just pull That's the like episode. the wackest thing I can imagine. Uh... I'm aware that the introduction for the What's Popping segment is in many ways, in and of itself, the bit, and the segment itself does not matter. I, I know oh, what you're I, trying I would, to do. I would quite disagree with that, but you're entitled to your opinion. So do you want to hear, I still, I, I still feel like I don't understand your answer. I'm staring right at you. Oh, where? Get on the Patreon. Yes, <laughs> Brian, I want you play the intro to the what's popping segment all right everybody our first segment is what's popping and the theme song goes here what's popping what's popping layton what's popping <laughs> the fucking blood vessels in my forehead <laughs> jory the comedy burden that has been placed upon you <laughs> in this episode it's so great. And I'm so <laughs> terrible. I don't, I don't even know where. I don't know where the boundaries of the bit are. There's no bit. I, why did, why does anyone say bit? I've been here for the past like five minutes with tears <laughs> in my eyes. <laughs> it was very hard to keep a straight face during. That. I, I almost, I almost lost it a few times. <laughs> uh, that was not planned. It just kind of happened, and I'm pleased with how it came out. Jory, you're a good sport. Thank you for being wow. here. Wow. No, I'm so happy. Brian, I hope you have fun listening to what transpired while you were gone. 
I think it'll cr- create a, a really fun tension for <laughs> listeners. Yeah, that was one where, as I mentioned earlier, I don't like to prepare these things. That one, I was kind of thinking as I was introducing it, what do I do to make this different from every other fucking time this guy's been on the show? And I was like, well, I could, you know, tweak it to be a little more meta. Mm-hmm. And I think it worked out. And I had no idea what the setup that you guys had done also was. That's really excellent. I mean, that made the bit for me. I think part of the reason why I was losing my shit is the anticipation of what Jory was going to do with my request to him and how increasingly difficult that request became the longer you went on. Yep. I very frequently am thinking about the way that he says, that is so transparently not an answer to that question. That is so transparently (laughs) transparently not an answer to my question. Which I barely even register (laughs) being too involved with my own bullshit. All right, listen, listen. That's the end of part one of our best of 2021. We'll be back next week on New Year's Eve with our part two. Wow. So stay tuned and we'll get some more clips uh, for you then. All right, everybody. That was a little distance kiss. (laughs) That was a slow and wet kiss. (laughs) It was just something about it where it was very off-putting. Congratulations. (laughs) Yes. You did it. Yes. All right. See you next time. Bye. Late Night is produced by Brian Wecht, Leighton Gray, and Jarek Centeno. Follow us on Twitter at Leighton Night, on Instagram at Leighton underscore Night, or email us at LeightonKnight at gmail.com. 